Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily rule. Today, I'm going to be talking about the prototype mechanic, which is the mechanic that I've personally received the most questions about out of all the mechanics in the new set. And I suppose that makes sense, because this is arguably the only really new mechanic that we actually have in Brothers War. So, let's take a look at what this mechanic does, and some really common interactions that I would expect to be able to see. So here is the comprehensive rules text for what prototype does. So if you have a prototype card like this, you can see that there's two different uh, alternate characteristics that you see in this box with the prototype. So that means that if you were to play this card prototyped, uh, then that would mean that you would use the characteristics that appear in this box rather than the ones that appear in the other uh, you know, parts of the card where you would normally expect to find that information. So let's take a look at exactly what that means. Basically, any time the game needs to know what the mana cost of this card is, uh, then there's two different options. And you, you could either look at the normal mana cost, or you could, if the spell was cast prototyped, look at this alternative one. And the same thing happens. You could look at the default power and toughness, or the game could look at the power and toughness that's in this box here. And so that's basically it. But there is, of course, a lot of different things that interact with this in some kind of non-intuitive or at least non-obvious ways. So here's a list of the most common things that I think might come up. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to kind of point out that the similarity uh, between these two mechanics here. So in both of these cases, there's really two options that you have in order to cast this spell. You could cast it like the normal way with the uh, power and tough or with the mana cost up here and, and then you just get a creature like this or you could cast it, it as, as the alternate half of this card and so the same sort of thing applies um, you've, you've got like the normal way to cast this with the normal power and toughness down here or you've got the alternate mana cost and you've got the alternate power and toughness here so which of these uh, ways that you cast the spell can of course change the characteristics of the spell and that might change how some stuff uh, works with it. So for example, the Disdainful Stroke can only counter spells with mana value of 4 or greater. So if you were casting it for the 6 cost, then that would be 4 or greater, so you would be able to counter with the Disdainful Stroke. But if you cast using the 3 mana value uh, down here, then the mana value would only be 3, and that would not be possible to counter that spell with the Disdainful Stroke. So depending on which of these two mana costs that you used, uh, that might change whether, whether certain counter spells would work against it. Uh, might change how certain other things interact with it because this has protection from green and you notice uh, if you were to pay this cost this is green so if you had uh, you know if you asked the game uh, what the mana cost was and, and you got this answer then of course you would say that that was a green creature so you would have protection from that but if you asked the game what the mana cost was and you got the answer six uh, then you would not uh, be a green creature so that would mean that that Vodian zombie would not have uh, protection from so based on which of these two mana costs that we use, the, the color would change. Now, I don't want people thinking uh, that everything changes. So literally the only thing that changes if you cast a spell prototyped would be if you have the mana cost or the power and toughness. And those are the only two things that change uh, if you cast the spell prototype. So for example, with this Tell Jalad chosen, you might be thinking that like it's it's got protection from artifacts. So maybe if you cast it with this part, then it wouldn't be an artifact anymore. But no, the only things that change is is the two and a green mana cost and things that are derived from the mana cost, such as the color or the mana value, uh, and the power and toughness. So in either case, the type line, which is this part right here, is going to be completely unchanged. And so that means that the game is going to say that this is an artifact creature golem, no matter whether we cast it from the normal cost or the prototype cost. So the other thing uh, about this is, is how this interacts with, with copy effects. And at first, I personally uh, had a hard time wrapping my head around how they were going to make this work. But it actually is very clean, and I, I actually really like the way that they've done this. So basically, uh, remember what I said at the very beginning of the presentation, which is that uh, there's an alternate set of characteristics that applies if you cast it prototyped. And any time the game needs to know one of these characteristics, uh, there's two possibilities. If you cast it prototyped, it would look at the alternate value for the mana value and the power toughness that's in here. 
And if you cast it normally, it would look at the normal values that are here and here in the normal spots on the card. And so that is exactly it. There isn't like a continuous effect that acts on the Cradle Clear Cutter that modifies its power and toughness or its mana cost uh, to these things. There isn't some sort of a, a text changing effect that like changes the text of the card to the appropriate thing. There isn't even a copy effect that like changes the copyable values. Rather, when you're determining the values on uh, a card, uh, what its characteristics would be, then you start with the values that are printed on the card and you go from there. And so in the case of prototype cards, uh, the values that are printed on the card would be this one or this one for the mana value or mana cost and this one or this one for the power and toughness. And so what that means is that when you're starting with the characteristics of the Cradle Clear Cutter, you're literally starting with one of these two options depending on if the prototype cost was paid. Uh, so that means that with the clone, if you had the clone uh, become a copy of the Cradle Clear Cutter, uh, and the game needs to decide what the values of the, the power toughness and the mana value of the clone is, well, it's going to be looking, it, it needs to look at the copyable information. So when the game is making a copy of Cradle Clear Cutter, it has to know what the mana cost is, and the mana cost is two and a green if it was prototyped, and it needs to know the power and toughness, and the power toughness is one, three if it was prototyped. So that means if you were to clone a Cradle Clear Cutter that was cast prototyped, then the clone would also have a mana uh, cost of two and a green and a power toughness of one, three. In case you're wondering, copying spells works the exact same way. If you were to copy a spell of Cradle Clear Cutter that was cast prototyped, then that is the same characteristics that you would see uh, on the token that that spell turned into when you uh, finished copying it. Okay, so, and this is, you know, obviously we had to talk about this one because this is probably the most common question that I got regarding the prototype. Uh, so we, we would say, like, if you cast this prototyped uh, and then played the flicker, what would happen? And so in order to answer this question, we're going to need a couple of different rules here. So first of all, in every zone except for the stack or the battlefield, and while on the stack or battlefield not cast as a prototype spell, a prototype card has only its normal characteristics. Uh, and this one here that says an object that moves from one zone to another becomes a brand new object with no memory of or relation to its previous existence. So if we take those together, then we can say that after we have flickered the prototype spell, then it becomes a brand new object with no memory or relation to its previous existence after it goes from the exile zone back onto the battlefield. And that's important because if it's on the battlefield while not cast as a prototype spell, which it wasn't, it's on the battlefield because it was put onto the battlefield by flicker, uh, the old object that no longer, uh, uh, you know, has any relation or uh, memory of, that object was cast as a prototype spell, but now that it's become a new object, that new object was not cast as a prototype spell. It was just put onto the battlefield by a flicker. Uh, and so that would mean that if you were to flicker the Cradle Clear Cutter that was cast prototyped, the Cradle Clear Cutter would come back as a 3-6 with a mana cost of 6 because uh, it's on the battlefield while not cast as a prototype spell. And of course, if you were wondering, that would apply the exact same way if you were to use some sort of a reanimate effect on it uh, or putting it on the battlefield in any way other than casting it as a prototype spell. So that would be the answer uh, for, for that interaction. Now, if you're an astute viewer, you might have wondered uh, something kind of interesting about this rule here. Uh, it says an object that moves from one zone to another becomes a new object with no memory of or no relation to its previous existence. And that might be kind of unsettling uh, if you were to think about, well, hey, wait a minute. Uh, because the only time that I actually said whether I was casting a prototype or not was when I was playing it on the stack. So if we were to move that prototype spell from the stack onto the battlefield, that would be moving from one zone to another, right? So wouldn't it become a new object with no memory of and no relation to its previous existence? And if that's the case, uh, you know, how could we say whether we cast it prototyped or not? And that's a very valid question. It turns out that this rule here actually has several exceptions. They're listed out all in the comprehensive rules. This is one of them. Uh, so an ability of a permanent, such as prototype, the prototype ability, uh, can reference information about the spell that became that permanent as it resolved, including what costs were paid to cast the spell. And so that's the reason why uh, when we cast a spell prototyped, on the stack, it knows that it's prototyped because we paid the prototype cost, and that's what zone we paid the prototype cost in. Uh, however, on the battlefield, it would also still uh, be prototyped, and that's the, the reason why it's able to access that information about what cost we paid. Okay. So with that being the case, uh, another thing that I got a lot of is, is how this would interact with phasing. And of course, like phasing thematically, like if you were flavorfully thinking about what was going on, it kind of does look a lot like what the flicker does. So you might expect the answer would be the same, but in fact, it is not. 
Uh, remember that the Flicker answer relied on the fact that Flicker takes the card and puts it in the exile zone and then it puts it back onto the battlefield. So because we changed zones, we became a new object with no relationship to our previous existence. And that would mean that because we changed zones and became a new object, we do not have any relationship to our previous self. So the game doesn't know that we paid the prototype cost. Now let's contrast that with the phasing mechanic. Now, when you phase out and phase in, even though that kind of looks like you're changing zones, you actually aren't. You're still on the battlefield the entire time. The only thing that happens is that the game, like, you know, doesn't know that you exist for, you know, part of the time that you are on the battlefield. So you're still the same permanent. Everything, you know, that applied when you were on the battlefield the last time and, and phased in uh, is going to apply the next time you're on the battlefield phased in. Uh, and so that would mean that if you phased out the cradle clear cutter that was cast prototype, that would mean that you come back as a cradle clear cutter that was still cast prototype. So you would still be a 1-3 with, with the 2 and a green mana cost. So that would be how this interacts with phasing is uh, like kind of weird that it works different from the flicker example, but that is how it works. Uh, and then Finally, I wanted to close out with uh, a couple of other kind of interesting consequences uh, of, of the fact that like the, the spell's characteristics can change. So based on the characteristics that the Cradle Clearcutter spell has, uh, it might be or might not be possible to cast it. And so, uh, of course, since we can change the characteristics of the spell, uh, that might mean that it would be okay to cast it one way, but not a different way. So for example, with the Ionia, let's say we named green, uh, then we couldn't cast spells uh, that were green. So that would mean that we would not be able to cast the prototype version of Cradle Clear Cutter because it's green, but we would be able to cast the normal version just fine because the normal version is not green, it's colorless. Uh, so in a similar way with the Void Winnower, uh, if you cannot cast spells with an even converted mana cost, then this would be an even uh, mana value there. Uh, but if we were to cast it prototype, then the mana value would be three, which is not even. So it would be okay to cast the prototype version, but not the normal version. Uh, and then also you might see some situations where like, a, a, you know, something applies to spells, but only spells with certain characteristics. So for example, we could cast green creature spells as though they had flash. So again, if we were casting this as a green creature spell, uh, then it would have flash, uh, but if we were casting it normally, then it would not uh, be able to cast uh, as though it had flash. So you would be able to cast it for three mana only if, uh, or you'd only be able to cast it with flash uh, only if you were paying uh, the, the three mana uh, to, to make it a green spell. If, if you were paying the six cost for it, then that would not be a green spell, even though its color identity uh, would still be green. Uh, the, the spell itself would only have the characteristics as dictated by uh, the, the characteristics appropriate for whether it was cast prototyped or not. And so that is all of the questions that I had prepared. Uh, if you have any other questions about the prototype mechanic or how it interacts with other cards or mechanics, uh, definitely leave them uh, in, in the comments below and I'll do my best to get through and, and answer all of them to the best of my ability. But that is all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another daily ruling. But until then, I hope you have a great day.